Welcome to the Story King Podcast, where great stories are read, discussed, and given their due honor. I'm your host, John Carlo, and in light of the coronavirus pandemic we're all living through right now, I've decided to dedicate Season 3 to all the kids and parents at home with each other looking for things to do. Though I try to keep everything clean, language-wise, normally the show is not exclusive to children. I often put a disclaimer at the front of any show I think has content that might not be suitable for kids under 12. But you parents don't have to worry about that for Season 3. Every episode for this season will be completely appropriate for kids of any age. So I'll be posting an episode every day for at least 10 days. The way it'll work is you'll hear this same introduction or a similar one at the beginning of each show. Then I'll read you a story and we'll end with a writing prompt based on that story. If your kids are too young to write, they can draw a picture based on the prompt. This way everyone can participate. And I am excited because we'll be going through some works of the very famous Danish fairy tale author Hans Christian Andersen. The one we're reading today is called In a Thousand Years, or in some versions, The Millennium. And the important thing I want you to remember when listening to this story is that it was written in the 1800s, way before air travel was invented, let alone commonplace. So this story is Hans Christian Andersen trying to imagine what the future might look like. Here it is. Yes, in a thousand years, people will fly on the wings of steam through the air, over the ocean. The young inhabitants of America will become visitors of old Europe. They will come over to see the monuments and the great cities, which will then be in ruins, just as we in our time make pilgrimages to the tottering splendors of southern Asia. In a thousand years they will come. The Thames, the Danube, the Rhine still roll their course. Mont Blanc stands firm with its snow-capped summit, and the northern lights gleam over the land of the north. But generation after generation has become dust. Whole rows of the mighty of the moment are forgotten, like those who already slumber under the hill on which the rich trader, whose ground it is, has built a bench on which he can sit and look out across his waving cornfields. To Europe, cry the young sons of America, to the land of our ancestors, the glorious land of monuments and fancy to Europe. The ship of the air comes. It is crowded with passengers, for the transit is quicker than by sea. The electromagnetic wire under the ocean has already telegraphed the number of the aerial caravan. Europe is in sight. It is the coast of Ireland that they see, but the passengers are still asleep. They will not be called till they are exactly over England. There they will first step on European shore, in the land of Shakespeare, as the educated call it, and the land of politics, the land of machines, as it is called by others. Here they stay a whole day. That is all the time the busy race can devote to the whole of England and Scotland. Then the journey is continued through the tunnel under the English Channel to France, the land of Charlemagne and Napoleon. Moliere is named, the learned men talk of the classic school of remote antiquity. There is rejoicing and shouting for the names of heroes, poets, and men of science whom our time does not know, but who will be born after our time in Paris, the center of Europe and elsewhere. The air steamboat flies over the country whence Columbus went forth, where Cortez was born, and where Calderon sang dramas in sounding verse. Beautiful black-eyed women live still in the blooming valleys, and the oldest songs speak of the Cid and the Alhambra. Then, through the air, over the sea, to Italy, where once lay old, everlasting Rome. It has vanished, the Campania lies desert. A single ruined wall is shown as the remains of St. Peter's, but there is a doubt if this ruin be genuine. Next to Greece, to sleep a night in the Grand Hotel at the top of Mount Olympus, to say that they have been there, and the journey is continued to the Bosphorus, to rest there a few hours, and see the place where Byzantium lay, and where the legend tells that the harem stood in the time of the Turks. Poor fishermen are now spreading their nets. Over the remains of mighty cities on the broad Danube, cities which we in our time know not, the travelers pass, but here and there, on the rich sites of those that time shall bring forth, the caravan sometimes descends and departs thence again. Down below lies Germany, that was once covered with a close net of railway and canals, the region where Luther spoke, where Goethe sang, and Mozart once held the scepter of harmony. Great names shine there, in science and in art, names that are unknown to us. One day devoted to seeing Germany, and one for the north, the country of Ersted and Linnaeus, and for Norway the land of old heroes and the young Normans. 
Iceland is visited on the journey home. The geysers burn no more. Hecla is an extinct volcano, but the rocky island is still fixed in the midst of the foaming sea, a continual monument of legend and poetry. There is really a great deal to be seen in Europe, says the young American, and we have seen it in a week, according to the directions of the great traveler. And here he mentions the name of one of his contemporaries in his celebrated work, How to See All Europe in a Week. So I picked that story today because I just found it so interesting that this man, over a hundred years ago, is trying to envision a time Americans will travel to Europe by air. This is really a science fiction piece for Hans Christian Andersen, and it took less than a hundred years to get something close to what he described. Nowadays, we travel by plane all over the world all the time. Well, maybe not right now, but it'll resume soon enough when this pandemic is over. So for your writing prompt today, I want you to think of what life on Earth or for humanity might look like in a thousand years. Are we still here? Have we moved to other planets? What kind of communication devices are there? What does traveling look like? Have fun with this one. Use your imagination. Get creative. Parents, remember, this is just a fun creative writing exercise. No need to check grammar and so forth. And if you have children too young to write, you can guide them with drawing a picture based off the prompt. Use your imagination. Well, I hope you enjoyed the show. If you do write a story based on the prompt and would like the chance for it to be read on the show, I'd love to check it out. You can email it to storykingpodcast at gmail.com. Just include your name and where you're from and which prompt your story is based off of. Again, that's storykingpodcast at gmail.com. You can follow us on YouTube and Twitter. Those links will be in the show notes. And please click like on our Facebook page. We're at facebook.com forward slash storykingpodcast. Or you can follow us on Instagram. Our username on there is storyking.podcast. And if you'd like to be part of what we're doing with this show, please consider becoming a patron. You can choose a membership tier at www.patreon.com forward slash the storyking. The link will be in the show notes as well. Thank you for listening to the Story King podcast, where great stories are read, discussed, and given their due honor. Stay healthy and safe, and please join us tomorrow for another great story. Until then.